What's up guys? Today I'm going to do a review of the John Brzezink and myself match, uh, but I'm not going to review the entire match. I'm only going to review the setup round one and the round one match. The rest of the match is pretty much uh, all the action was, was round one and in the setup. So hope you guys uh, like it. I'll, uh, I'll do my best to, to give you some good detail. So this can be found on Larry Wheels' channel. So thanks, Larry and Core Sports for everything you guys are doing. So uh, maybe I'll pause it really quick before we even get started and just give a little bit of backstory to my evaluation on what my tactics were going to be going into the match. Um, a lot of what I was considering was John's last few matches against his last few opponents, uh, as well, obviously I was playing into our history and I was listening to things that John was saying leading up to it. Um, our most recent match in 2015, uh, the only success I had with John was in the straps going for a hook. So this was, uh, initially when I started to think about the match was my safe spot. I was like, okay, I, I believe that that is a move that I can potentially do. I can just go all in on a hook in the straps, stop the match and bleed them. Because if I could do it in 2015, I think I can do it now. Um, now, leading up to the match, there were a lot of discussions and a lot of back and forth about um, the rules. And there was a lot of discussions about complaints about how I would set up in the match. Uh, John particularly highlighted um, his concerns about the height of my webbing and my post, which was a problem for him in 2008. Uh, as the match drew closer and this became more of a talking point, uh, and then in my, and this was solidified actually in just uh, a few times that we shook hands before the event, I noticed that when John would shake my hand uh, some of his movement patterns were actually the same as um, as they were a long time ago. One of the one of the technical things that uh, I like to exploit is when when someone will grab me. And and John is uh, you can say whatever you like about John about his technique. Um, John is obviously an extremely versatile arm wrestler. Um, but I believe that John's panic button. So what I mean by that is when it's all on the line, um, I believe that John is, is hook based. So I believe that John's wrist flexion is, is, is kind of his ace is, is kind of his lead. And I felt him leading with that in his handshakes with me and, um, uh, you know, just the initial, you know, just touching, and believe me, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff you can get just from shaking a guy's hand. Um, I, I felt that there was something there, and that's why towards the end I switched to thinking that yes, an outside high posting attack uh, would be something that John would perceive as the most dangerous. So this is so sorry for the lengthy lengthy explanation there. So we have 30 seconds to get our grip outside the strap and I'm trying to get him to hold on to me. I'm trying to make him come to me and there he's starting to grab me and I'm fine with this. Anytime we can kind of exchange energy, kind of a general rule for me with most people is I, I'll, I'll continue to fight. Here I am setting up, you know, very high, uh, you know, trying to get John to commit to grabbing me. This is the first thing I'm trying to 
accomplish. John, hold on to me. I want to, I don't want to be the first one to hold him now. I know that this is a, a central part of every arm wrestler's game. So much of technique happens uh, when, when the other person holds on to you. If you can accomplish a high hand and the other person drops slightly to, to initiate a cup, that's when you can start to break into all your outside, you know, low hand top roll or high bottom, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and a lot of this stuff happens before they say go. It's just how it is. Um, a lot of these small negotiation pieces, unless you're moving just right into a, a referee's grip, which there isn't in this league, it's a set grip and there are subtle differences. Um, there, there is definitely room for these, these pressures to kind of be, um, well, established. It was definitely, uh, in Devin's favor. He was way high there. Um, almost feels like they need to scoot his elbow back a little bit. I don't know if they would do that. So the thing that I'm always going to argue is I have as much right to any position with my elbow on the pad as another. Um, and I will lower my webbing to accomplish an equal, well, I'll, I'll lower my hand angle so that we accomplish an even grip, right? And John is negotiating. He, John wants depth and I want to be outside. So this is, this is what this whole fight is about. John wants depth and I want to get into John's fingers. So straps being applied. And there is subtle pressuring, subtle positioning. And I'm already complaining that he's covering my thumb knuckle. Uh, yeah. John's so sneaky there. Um, Interesting. Uh, John has certainly set the tone on how he's prepared to fight this time. We're going to listen in every chance we get to what the arm wrestlers are saying at the table there. The straps being applied. Yeah, I can feel that action boiling over. I'm just trying. You are lifting elbow all the time. I'm going to lift it. I'm going to give both you guys a foul if you don't listen to me. All right? Elbows down and do not move. I understand, John. Let me get the strap on and all of that. Did you know that less than one percent of It's funny to me, uh, there's so many different rule systems out there. Uh, you know, you can go to the PAL where things are super strict, really locked in, very little wiggle room for the athletes, and the referee has a massive impact there. Um, and then you can go all the way to a show like Game of Arms where the referee had no power whatsoever, and the athlete has a lot of say in the, in the, in the referee has little impact. Um, you just have to understand the arena you're fighting in and do your best to win. Now that is not good for John. He's, he's getting the strap applied where he's much lower in the webbing. Bill said he'll fix it once the strap is applied, but the, that will already give the advantage. Okay, that's better. That's much better. Right, so one of the rules is, um, you know, you have to have your elbow on the pad when you get a grip. Now, these are gray areas, obviously. John's doing his best to establish depth. And I'm doing my best to keep his elbow down and just keep on establishing pressures in his fingers. Elbow. Position early, you can see that massively powerfully built hand of John Brzee. Elbow. With his arm that much 
making his loose You have to bring a double back, though. You, you do have to bring a double back. back. It's an Albert. I know it's an Albert because your arm is in the corner of the and it's going to be fine. My rubber is not Albert. Get your elbow it's back. not bullshit. Get Why your do I have to bring my elbow back when I'm working with you? What do I need? He's not. Yeah, he's not. So tell him to bring his elbow down. One foul. It's not. <sighs> yeah. That was really interesting to me, you know, that I received a foul while John's elbow was in the air. Um, yes, I am not following the direction of the referee. However, um, what I'm trying to say is how am I possibly being made to adjust my elbow while he has his elbow in the air? Uh, to me... From a rules perspective, it didn't make a lot of sense that I would get a foul. However, being a referee is an extremely difficult job, especially when you got a guy like John Brzezink and I uh, at the table because we, we are going to fight for every little thing in the grip. Um, a lot of arm wrestling is won and lost before they say go. Absolutely. I actually think that was a small error for John. Um, him compl like I think that that was a pretty fair. If I think if they had started the match right there, that was pretty fair. Um, but by him complaining, it actually delayed the match a little bit more. And I think that every every second it you delay it, it just starts to come more towards me. Again, there, John. Great position. One more time. I think we're about to get a start. I think it's about to get going. No moving. Going to going down. Watch your now being Okay. Right there. I think that that is. That's about as fair as it's going to get. The match might be a little bit on John's side of the table. But I think that Bill's pretty much sick of it at this point, and we are going to start this match. You can see, like, if you line up the pegs, match is certainly towards John's side, but whatever. We're loaded. It's about as even as it's going to get, so Bill's going to start this thing. Go! ready to go? Okay, right here. All right. Great start from John. Great, great start from John. Now, I mean, who's in the driver's seat? Uh, you know, I've got some position. John's got some position. My, my wrist is in a really healthy position. Table, ha uh, table side is in John's favor. And... That that's a that's a that's a tough choice for John. So you see, we kind of went back to a little bit of a balanced spot, and then John re went for the pin. Okay, and that's 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 an interesting choice. You know, he went back for the pin as opposed to trying to to extend me and take my hand. Um, went all in. So that that point right there is when John was like, okay. I'm not going to take the hand. I'm going for that pin. Uh, and, he, and he laid down the... Okay. 
right there, actually, and I told John this after the match, during like this second, like around this period, and probably like two seconds before, I really believe, I really believe that if John had of just abandoned his wrist completely, gone flop and gone for it, he might have either got the pin or forced me off the back of the pad in an elbow foul. But as you see, my wrist is starting to get bent here. I've kind of, with that amount of bend, I've started to shut down his press lane. And I'm starting it, there we go. And that's about it. Uh, arm wrestling is a lot about efficiency. When you talk about a super match, when you talk about all the rounds before you're against, uh, well, before you lose, they are, they're the warm up, they're the jabs, they're the setup. Um, you know, they don't really matter. Round one, if you're doing six, your first three rounds really don't matter. It's the fourth round that matters. The fourth win is the only win that matters. So round one, when you think about a super match, you should very much just try and be super efficient. Um, what is efficiency? It's using more muscles against less muscles. So get about targeting a person's fingers and pronation. You know, you burn out a person's fingers, you burn out a person's hand over the course of a super match, everything's going to fall apart. Uh, massive respect to John. Uh, it gets tough, you know, 57 is tough. Um, I'm really curious to see how he does in his upcoming matches. He's got a huge match coming up with Zoloev. Um, and Zoloev, I believe, is, is going gonna, is gonna to go outside. I think he's going to do this. I mean, he had great luck against Todd Hutchings. Um, did fantastic with Todd Hutchings. So, I I I expect that it'll it'll go outside as well. Only difference is John is <laughs> if he'll go straps with him. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how John's strap game holds up with Zoloev. And can his conditioning um, make it through, you know, the, the three rounds that he's going to need to win? Zoloev will be a very good test for John in that uh, the strength will be close. The technique is very dangerous. And, uh, and the conditioning will probably be superior. So... Really curious to see if John can pull off a win against a guy who's, you know, a, a more similar weight. Uh, anyways, honor to pull against John. Always uh, the first round was uh, something I'll, I'll remember for sure. Merry Christmas, everybody.